Welcome to another Paranormal Highlight. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. Hope all of you got out, got some fresh air, you know, do whatever you needed to do. Research, read books, whatever it is, go to the movies. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. Now, today's show is a cool battle. What's the bigger story? Is it the skunk ape? Or is it the Yeti? Now, we know the Yeti's got the more popular name all around the world. Ab Abomino Snowman. The Yeti's in movies. But is that enough to win a slaughter versus the Skunk Ape? Florida's own Bigfoot? Or is Skunk Ape a Bigfoot? Is it a clan? I don't know. What, what are the size difference between a Yeti and a Skunk Ape? Will we get those answers on the Paranormal Highway? Probably not. But you know what? We're going to do our best. We're going to see what's out there. We're going to listen. I have a guest today, Danny Stanton. Danny Stanton has some great information about what he's heard the size of a Yeti is. So maybe we can get some answers of the differences between a skunk ape and a Yeti. Is it just one brown, black versus white? I don't know. So get strapped in. Get your popcorn. Get your coffee. Because we're ready to take this ride on the Paranormal Highway. Greetings from South Carolina. Danny, before we start, I got to make an apology for last Thursday. Usually after we do these battles, I tell everybody, who am I voting for? I usually wait until I hear everybody's sides. And I, ne I didn't do that last Thursday, the snake in our house versus the smurl haunting. I didn't tell you guys who, who I voted for. So I'm just letting you guys know I voted for the smurl haunting. I think that's the bigger story than a snake in her house. Beyond that, we're not there for that, but I apologize. I will tell you guys at the end of this show or or after we talk about both sides, and I'll tell you who I'm going to vote for. But today we got the Yeti versus the Skunk Ape. What's the bigger story? Is one scarier than the other? What's the difference between the two? Or is there a difference? Is it one because the hair color matches the snow? One matches... You know, the Florida, does the skunk ape mean that Florida stinks? I don't know these answers, but maybe today we can find some answers. But we're going to start with the Yeti. I do got some video clips of of the Yeti, but but so, so Dan, I know you know some uh, um, height and stuff of the Yeti. So when I play some of these videos, and, and all because I'm playing a video, it doesn't mean that the video is right. They're getting their information, putting one together, just like anybody else. So after I play a video, I like you to cross-reference it, like saying, well, they're wrong here. This is what I heard. And I know this is all speculations in a way, but I know you do better research than some people do making videos, not saying well, they're books on it. knowledge. You got a book right there. So yeah. the first video is um, is from a channel called The Rackinar uh Ragnar Rocket, which the guy gave me permission to show his video. He said, go for it. It's kind of cute video. It's kind of a cute Yeti video because it's, it's like he made it where kids 
could kind of like understand it, which is awesome when you can get kids into the cryptids world. However, you could do it is awesome. So you you'll hear a kid voice in his first video, and it's called "What is a Yeti?" And don't forget to put in your vote on the sidelines because right now, if I look at the vote so far, we have twenty votes, and it's and it's Yeti skunk. 50-50. It's tied. It is tied. Oh, my God. This is a tight race. Who's going to win this battle? But here we go. Well, what it's so close Yeti? because we're basically the same size. You know, when it comes to a good match, you got to have two creatures that are basically equal. So this ought to be a good one tonight here at the Garden. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be a good one at the Garden. Here we go. Is it your tip? Hey guys, my name's Luke, and I'm here to tell you about the mysterious creature known as the Yeti. Okay. Firstly, what is a Yeti? The Yeti is a colossal seven foot tall hominid, a giant ape like creature. Uh, for, for a second, he says seven foot, and I yeah. remember you're saying they're about five feet, right? From what I've heard, and I've heard thousands of Sherpa stories, and did a lot of research on Yeti, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Swamp Apes. Boggy Creek Monsters. I, this is my field. You know what I mean? And everything I've ever heard has always described the Yeti as a smaller creature, five and a half to six and a half feet tall at the biggest, and a lot more apish than than a Bigfoot, per se. Actually, the Yeti and the Swamp Ape, like I was saying, are basically talked about as being around the same size, that five and a half to six and a half foot tall, not gigantic like a Sasquatch would be or a Bigfoot's get up to seven and a half, eight foot tall in reports. And, and what's funny, I think I got a couple of Yeti videos, and I think both videos describe the, the height and size differently. Like I was saying, not everybody, not everybody has the not not saying correct information. Nobody has the same information. So let, let's hear the rest of this. Just standing on two legs, their teeth defy dental norms, and they are clad in coarse, insulating hair with foreheads that are reminiscent of traffic cones, and feet of truly epic proportions. The Yeti is said to live in the high peaks of the snowy Himalayan mountains, a secluded icy home away from pesky explorers and other peeps. Yeti Jones. The Yeti first gained international fame in 1951, when the British mountaineer and explorer Eric Shipton discovered some exceptionally large footprints descending down the mountain during his Everest expedition. This is the first ever photograph of a Yeti footprint taken near Mount Everest in 1951. Now, now, for, first of all, Dalian, is that correct right there? Is that supposedly be the first evidence of a Yeti footprint? Okay, now here you go with that. They, they said gigantic footprints, right? And, and once again, it's a smaller creature. It don't leave gigantic footprints. The pickaxe seen as a size reference is nine and one half inches long. True. I, I'm getting it from the book right here. <laughs> okay. And that would make it the, the print, uh, a 10 inch print at the biggest. So, so in a way that some of the big footprints we find go 17, 18, 19 inches and have a lot more depth than something like this would have. This is a, this is a smaller creature. And and so when you're looking at the picture, they're making it look a lot bigger than it really is because that pick ain't really that big in the first place. Well, you have to go by the size of the nine and a half inch snow pick beside it. Yeah, and and all because some uh, a creature could be five feet or not, it doesn't mean they have big feet either. They might have to have big feet for walking in the Himalayans and the rocky snow and all that. So their feet might be larger than the average height. What do you think of a five foot person would would have? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying they don't have a bigger foot than something five foot would have. Yeah. I'm just saying that they're not considered to be nine, eight or nine foot tall, seven and a half foot tall in the Himalayas yeah. or in the Florida swamps. Because, you know, I, I'm six foot and uh, my feet, I wear size 13s. I know people who are who six foot wear size nine. See, I, I'm six four and I wear size 12. See, and you're six four. You wear a size twelve. I'm six foot. 
and I wear size 13s. You got them big foot, big foot feet. That's what, you know what causes <laughs> that? All, all that running around barefooted in the woods. Probably. <laughs> now, I don't take my shoes off for no reason except for go to bed or take a bath. What else does this guy say? As you can imagine, whoever made these prints might struggle to find shoes that fit, perhaps preferring instead to wear super-sized slippers. The origin of the Yeti myth appears to be related to the folklore of the Himalayan people, who once worshipped a glacier being as god of the hunt, as well as the mirror god in Tibetan Buddhism. The mirror god were the protectors of the holy city of the old gods. Fun facts about Yetis. Yetis are often called the abominable snowman. This is due to a misinterpretation by journalist Henry Newman in 1921. He mistook a reference meaning man-bear snowman as dirty snowman and coined the term abominable for exaggeration. It is believed that the Yetis live in the snowy mountains like the Himalayas. Probably did it on purpose to sell books. The name just sounds better. <laughs> I mean, really. And when you see this snowman. picture, take note. These mountain, these mountain rams, these these wild sheep, are are, are millions in the mountains and would pr provide a constant source of food for anything living up that high. Hey, look at this guy. He's five nine and he's wearing size twelve, and you're six foot four. So I just kind of tell you, sometimes the so your height doesn't matter how big your feet is. Yeah, can you imagine can be very cold eight foot, and harsh. Can you imagine a big old eight foot Bigfoot with size nines? <laughs> You know, maybe there is one. <laughs> we don't know. But I, I, I know that eight foot, you would think it has to be at least 15 and higher. But Yeah, you would think. You would think. But I guess, you know, you, you, you're dealt with a certain size and you learn to live with it, I guess. Maybe Bigfoot are no different than us. <laughs> that, that's a good point, Dan. That's a good point. It'd make a good movie. Yetis have big hairy bodies that, that help them feet. keep warm in the frozen weather. They like to leave big footprints in the snow. And some people have tried to follow the footprints to find them. Well, they don't have a... Yetis are extremely good at hiding and staying hidden. They have to leave which is why it's really hard to find Everybody one. sinks in the snow. That's all from us at Ragnarokit. Now, that's one video. But I think I remember this next video. They talk about being a different size. Like I was trying to show that, that, that you have to watch. If you're really going to study the Yeti or Skunk Ape or anything, you got to watch more than one video because everybody has different kind of information. I think this one. So what you don't need to do is what you don't need to do is watch none of these lying ass videos where everybody don't know what they're talking about. You need to come over to the paranormal highway yeah. and listen to Danny and Eric give you the facts. That's and that's what we're here for, trying to yes. determine what is the facts and what is not the facts. So let's check out this next video. A creature that has always fascinated the human imagination, it is the Yeti. The two-legged massive ape-like animal exists more in the myths and legends than in real life. But a series of pictures released by the Indian Army could challenge that belief. During one of their recent mountaineering expeditions, soldiers spotted large mysterious footprints in the snow close to Nepal's Makalu base camp. The army claims that they point to the existence of Yeti, a mysterious ape-like creature that lives in the Himalayas. Yeti was first mentioned in the Nepali folklore and is also known as the abominable snowman. It is an ape-like creature taller than an average human and is said to inhabit... Okay, taller than an average human. An average human is, what, maybe 5'9"? So that's maybe more in line what you're saying, Danny, that, you know, they're about 5 feet to 6, more like, almost like a human. So but they're far describing more, far more wider in girth, wider, heavier yeah. than, than a human would be. And according to the witnesses, these Yeti have the canine teeth like Dracula, you know, with the big fangs. And the Bigfoot and the swamp ape and the creatures reported here seem to have the human teeth with no, you don't, you don't get to report the fangs in, in the United States. So so, there is a difference. People, see that people in the chat? You have one video talked about over seven feet, and they're talking about almost the size of, of the average human. So right there along, you got different people getting different theories, and who knows where they're getting their stuff from. And it's in the Himalayas and the snow-capped regions of Siberia, Central and East Asia. Yeti is also referred to as Mete by the locals, which means man-bear. Yeti is a part of the history and the mythology of Nepal and pre-Buddhist beliefs, followed by several Himalayan people. 
Even oh, the Sherpas oh. who stay in the oh, higher mountainous regions of Nepal always believed in the existence of Yeti and passed down stories of the snowman from one generation to the other. In the 19th century, Yeti also became a part of the popular culture and was depicted in films, literature, music and video games. A lot of cartoons. All the initial myths about Yeti took a definite shape when mountaineers started exploring the Himalayas. Since the 1920s, several trained mountaineers ventured into the Himalayas to find out more about this creature. They came back with many stories of Yeti sightings, but never Man. with any concrete evidence Man, of its existence. Big. But some people claim that they have seen a giant ape-like man walking through the high mountains, although there is no documented proof. So, scientists believe that the Yeti is no more than a misidentified wild animal. But the newest set of pictures released by the army race... And, and first of all, people, you can't believe government or, or, or any anybody. They're, 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 no country, no state, people are going to come out and admit that they're real. They're just not going to do it. I'm talking about people in high up. They're just not going to do it. Like them new footprints they showed a while ago, the, the new footprints the Himalayan army found or whatever... So they don't know what a rabbit is up there? Because they look like some big old rabbit Bowser. tracks to me. Talk about those? Yeah, they, the, the other picture where they had the uh, army found them. There's those. It was oh, back in place, but oh. but it, did look, it did look a lot like rabbit tracks to me. It's way back. Boy, yeah, oh. that's that one. That's rabbit tracks. Yeah, I mean, you're, you know, because the. You can make the picture of a camera make it look like they're big, but they're really tiny. Well, they're, they're more like rabbit tracks to me. I did a lot of tracking. Oh, hillbilly from South Carolina and all. Now, I got just one more. This is a short. It's a less than a minute, and it's kind of a, a different kind of a weird take of a Yeti. So this is, might be this might be interesting. Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman, is a creature that lives in the Himalayan mountains, according to legends. He is said to be a descendant of the Monkey King, a very famous figure from Asian mythology, who is said to have a child with an ogre. The monster is all covered with fur. First of all, before I go further, <coughs> have you ever heard of that theory about they made it with the ogre? To, to you see, that, 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 that's just mythology, I think. Mythology. But who knows what, what an ogre was back then? That could have been a Bigfoot. That's true. That's a good maybe, point. You know, Over maybe two. there is some basis in these myth, these mythical creatures. Yeah, that's a good point. Meters tall and with huge feet. This creature would have spread around. I'm curious what size he said it was. Sir is all covered with fur. Over two meters tall and with huge feet. This creature would have spread around the world and is therefore often associated with the Bigfoot of American folklore. There are several records on the internet of supposed yetis, but certainly all are fake. It is said that the legend of the abominable snowmen must have arisen after the first encounters between men of the Sherpa culture and grizzly bears of the Himalayas. But in this region, there are people who swear that they have spotted the real yeti. Now, there was a part in the video where he said that all the photos are fake. And, and, and the honest truth of that is, how do you truly know that a photo could be a, a, a fake? Or, or, you know what I mean? Like, like, it just seems like somebody just make, not making it up, but they're just saying that because they, they want to be a skeptic. And you don't truly know exactly what photo, like, like, um, Hey Dan, I'm, I'm sure you saw um, this one video because this is supposed to be a Yeti sighting. Like, um, I want to see if you've seen this video of a Yeti sighting. Now, there's, they're, they're saying that they had a, I mean, first of all, it's brown, black, and that could just be a regular person walking in snow, right? I mean, well, have you seen that? I, I would think a Yeti or a Bigfoot or whatever would be a little bit easier going through the snow than that poor thing falling down and stumbling out through there. But, right. Re really? I, I'm, that's what I'm saying? I mean. That looks like a guy in a suit, a, 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 a parka. 
Yeah, let me see what else. Let me see. It just seems like he's having trouble. The arms do seem to be real long. Like I said, I, I, I don't know if that's real or not, but I'm just I've curious if you've seen that one. I seen a video from somewhere in Siberia or Russia where these kids are playing and they find some tracks and the kids follow the tracks and see something off in the distance. And that's probably about the most convincing thing I've seen coming out of that area. You see full Bigfoot screen Yeti for over two minutes straight echoing from the Valley to Valley and mountains Ridge to the mountain Ridge. Okay. So let me ask you this now. So is the Yeti only related to the Himalayans? It can't is the clan of the Yeti in different places than just being in the Himalayas. I would think all the way to the Ural Mountains of Siberia and Russia, that whole area over there would have something similar to a Yeti or a you see, that's just it. I think Yeti, Bigfoot, all these creatures are on the same family tree. They might not be exact, they might be they might be the difference between me and a Japanese man is the difference between a Yeti and a Bigfoot. You know, they're the same species. They're the same creature. They just are different races of the same species. You know, like you take it that you're a, you're a, you're a white dude from Washington, right? Yep. Well, there's a black dude from Texas or a Mexican from Mexico, and a, from Mexico or, or a Japanese man from Japan or a China man from China, you know, yep. Chinese. And you got these different races of people. Well, Bigfoot, has a family tree just like ours, and these different variations are different races of the same creature. If and you I agree my, with you. My, my thought. You know that's why that's why a yeti looks different than a than a bigfoot versus a swamp ape versus that thing that lives in the Vietnam jungle that that really is a wild man. You know. Yeah. And they're all still basically of the same family. The in my, in, 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 in my humble opinion. Well, Renee Cruz, you're saying that Sierra National Park is Sasquatch turf. Well, in the Sierra Mountains, that's where we saw our Bigfoot. So, Renee, you're probably right. I think you're right. I mean, if you live in a certain continent for hundreds of thousands of years, you, you know, your body kind of not mutate, but you become part, you know, like, like, like if you live in a colder continent, your blood is a little thicker where you could take that cold easier than if you go from, um, uh, Alaska to Arizona. You kind of adapt to the area that you're in. I mean, that's just nature. That's natural. I mean, I remember when I first moved from Fresno to Washington, it was like 60 degrees, and I was wearing jackets because I was fucking cold, and everybody in Washington was wearing shorts. Because you get, you know, you know what I mean? You get used to your environment. And then, of course, I wear shorts. And when I go back to Fresno, when it's like 110 degrees, Man, I can't take it like I once did as a kid. I know I was from I'm from the South, you know, South Carolina, we have that temperate environment. It don't never get too hot and it don't never get too cold most of the time. Once in a while in the summer we get a few hot, humid days. And once in a while in the winter we get four or five days where it's really chilly, you know, like twelve or thirteen degrees. Mm -hmm. But when I left here and I went to Alaska and was up there for six months, I froze my fat ass off. I, I did. It was cold all the time. It's supposed to be summer. And it's 30 degrees. All right. Well, people, so far, after 25 votes, the Yeti is winning 52% to 48%. So right now, the Yeti's got the upper hand. That's because it's got the point. But, but we it's haven't talked about the skunk ape. And, and, and I'm going to have um, Danny hold off on who he's going to pick for his bigger story after we look at – videos now we're going to look on the skunk ape side now for the record people there's not a whole lot of uh video that i could use for skunk ape there's more for yeti versus skunk ape so i don't have like great great stuff because a lot of the great stuff are 50 minutes and i'm not going to play a 50 minute video on my show you could use a lot of um connor stuff bigfoot and on you know what because he has a quite a bit of skunk he does. stuff. He, he does. He just, he just came out with a video just a day ago. I watched standing it. In that, and, that's, and that little shop is actually in one of these videos here. Let's check out the first one. It is said to be a large, hairy creature that lives in the swamps of Florida. 
It's been described as being similar to Bigfoot, but with a distinctive odor. There have been many reported sightings of the skunk ape over the years, but no one has ever been able to provide any concrete evidence of its existence. One of the most famous skunk ape stories is from the 1960s. A group of Boy Scouts were camping in the Okefenokee Swamp when they claimed to see a large, hairy creature walking through the woods. They said that the creature had a strong odor, like a skunk. Another famous skunk ape sighting happened in 2000. A man was driving home from work when he saw a large creature standing in the middle of the road. The creature was about 10 feet tall and had long, dark hair. The man said that the creature had a strong odor like a skunk. Some people believe that the skunk ape is a real creature, while others believe that it's just a myth. So what do you think? Do you believe in the skunk ape? Let me know in the comments. Okay. Now, first of all, would it be safe to say, Danny, that, you know, a skunk ape, is it is a Bigfoot. But, you know, saying you smell like a skunk, I mean... The Florida is swampland. I mean, if you're a Bigfoot hanging out in the swampland, <laughs> aren't you? Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert, but wouldn't a Bigfoot naturally start smelling like a skunk if you start living in the swamplands, well, in your opinion? Basically, take note now on almost on a lot of sighting reports from around the whole United States, a foul smell is reported with the creature. The legend of the, the Boggy Creek Monster, foul smell. Momo in Missouri has a foul smell. There's a couple of cryptid sightings in Arkansas that have a really foul smell. And the one, Kentucky, the one in Kentucky is supposed to smell so bad it makes your eyes water. So there is a, a whole pattern of strange smells associated with these creatures. I have to ask, uh, the hacker tomorrow wrote, Bigfoot really has to be real. Now, now hacker tomorrow, are, are you saying that? <laughs> Are you saying that uh, Bigfoot has to be real for a skunk ape to be real? Because I, I'm, I a, I'm assuming like the hacker of tomorrow is is a guy named Mox that I know. Okay, because because I I'm is a, you right, Mox? Yeah, because when I think of a skunk ape, I, I I'm just thinking of uh, another client of a Bigfoot. You know, just like living in different states. He just they, you know they live in the swamp lands and they start like I think Danny, you're right. I think all technically. Bigfoot up close is going to have a smell to it. But if you're always in the swamps, in the swamp waters and stuff, you're probably going to smell like wet dog more than the average Bigfoot somewhere else in some other states. We should ask Long Island Bigfoot Mike if his Bigfoot that he always encounters smells like poop. Yeah, you know, that's a good question. You know, because New York, I suppose that might be the worst smelling one of the bunch. Because, guys, when we had, when we, when, my 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 family had the Bigfoot encounter. N nobody, no, not one person ever mentioned they smelled a certain thing. You know, I think we're more memorized on seeing the thing, and then so I've actually encountered a few times where I've smelled what smelled like raw sewage. But I've had a lot of encounter things happen, a lot of weird stuff where I didn't smell nothing. But they have been, and I can think of four or five different occasions where the, there was an overpowering, horrible stench involved in what was going on. See, uh, Freaky Geek wrote, I had a dog that loved running in the bog. It did not smell like a skunk, but still had a bad order. I get what you're saying. Uh, Deer in Headlights was writing, they say aliens dump creatures from another planet on Australia. I mean, yeah, there's different theories. I mean, that's that's a that's a whole other theory. That, 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 Big, that. Bigfoot was brought here from another planet. I mean, you know, we're that's a whole that's actually a whole other show. I mean, that's like another conspiracy show. That not, I'm not saying I hate using the word conspiracy because once you use the word conspiracy, it makes it sound like we're talking fake stuff. We believe in this stuff, but but there's a whole other world a show you could do about. Bigfoot's coming from space, uh, portals. This is basically just the differences between a skunk ape and a yeti kind of. <coughs> thing. So let's now this next video claims they have evidence that a skunk ape is real through a footprint, and I'm glad Danny's here because Danny is known to go out and one of you think when you research Danny, you do look for footprints. I actually found one about a week ago, and I yeah, saw you did video on my YouTube channel. You did. But it was it was one of these it was one of these jetty tracks because it wasn't about nine inches long. But here's what got me is I put my foot right beside it, right? And I barely could leave a print. But this little nine foot, this little nine foot print 
sitting on kind of hard ground was an inch and a half deep. Whatever made that had to weigh more than me, and I hit 270. Yeah. It had to be twice what I weigh to make an inch in the ground like that. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good research right there. Recognizing how hard the ground is. Well, how I put, hard I put, I put it aside it for scale, and when it did, I barely did sink it. I was like, "Whoa, man! I, I didn't even make a dent." So you let's know, take a look at a little this bit of dirt video. move when I stood up, but but this print was just god awful deep. Yep. We've just discovered evidence of the Florida skunk ape. Big heel pad. Big toe, second, third, two right feet. fourth, fifth toe. Two right foot imprints in the mud with what appears to be a raccoon or possum print next to it. Small little critter like a squirrel perhaps here. This is crazy. So, so. Pad. You think the foot he's looking at, because of the shape of the fingers but that you're seeing here, you think that can be a, 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 not, not just a skunk ape, a, a Bigfoot alone footprint? It, it's compelling. It, 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 it's very interesting tracks. So what, what, what really strikes me on it, and this is the good part, is you know he probably didn't just stamp it in the ground with a stamper. And say, hey, look, I found a track. Because it's been there for a while, obviously, because other animals have walked over it. And that would tend to, I mean, that, that, that track's 12 hours, 13, 14 hours old. And earlier in the show, guys, uh, Danny talked about our good friend, um, Bigfoot Anon, oh. which, which I did have one of his videos of him in a cave finding a footprint where he thinks it could be a skunk ape just like you're talking about his channel has a lot of good stuff so let's check uh, out this video i watch everything he puts out yep hey guys it's connor from bigfoot anonymous we're deep on the ground <laughs> after miles of hiking through briars and prickers over railroads and under bridges. It's been a crazy day, but it's all been worth it because we just had a discovery. We just found this five toe print deep in the cave, and you can clearly see the five toes of the Now, guys, remember, he's in a cave, so the interference sound you're hearing is not from StreamYard. It's because he's in a cave. But if you look what he's pointing at, you can see like the fingers of a toe and the and the length of the foot. All his videos sound so good, and the one you picked to put on the show today is the only video he's got with crappy sound, Eric. Hey, that's because because I want to show the raw video, the rawness. The raw right no, no change, no nothing. This is this is you know, no cleanup, no cleanup of the videotape. The raw. It is incredible. My mind is blown. There is no possibility of any human beings making that march barefoot. So now we really have to keep our head on a swivel because we are not the only two-legged creature down here. And the chances are they've been listening to us this whole time. Uh, I'm going to agree with him right there. Listen, you're, you're in this cave, and you found this kind of a footprint. And look, it looked fresh. Yes, yes, how I won the lottery. Raw and uncut. That's what I like. That would be a little scary because you don't know whatever made this thing, even if you think it's a human, can still be down there looking at you. Did so, that footprint have what looked like claws coming off of it? Yeah, if you look at it. Uh, um, uh, I, I, hold on, I think it shows it again. All the time. Yeah. I just want to thank them for not allowing us to intrude. I'm He's so thinking them. It's twisted right that now is because so my smart. mind is blown. It is, it is taking us to a new level. We have found food in this area. We have to send it to the machine. Wow. It's still working today. Same prayer. 
Hey. Almost identical. And and what? Hey, hold on, hey, uh, Danny, show that again. I want to make. I want to oh, make you no, bigger. No, no, you want me to have to dig that back out? It took me five minutes to find it while ago. <laughs> I screwed it up. But, but guys, what what Connor did was very smart and very intelligent. What a lot of paranormal <laughs> investigators do when they find something, if they think there's something there, you tell them, thank you for showing it to me. Thank you for letting me see it. Be kind. Because if you believe, if you're a believer in the Bigfoot, which I am, you know, I believe they can, they can sense you on what kind of person you are. They can sense if you're a person that, that threatens danger. Hold on. I think he found it. Yeah, that is close. Yeah, very similar. I noticed that before, but they, they say it in the book that it's more reminiscent of what a handprint would look like, a claw handprint. And also I want to point out the fact that, that just saying, now I'm not saying it's not a Bigfoot. I'm not saying it's not a Swamp Ape. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that everything I've ever read, when it comes to Bigfoots, Yetis, skunk apes, anything like that, they've always had hands like ours, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is they don't mm -hmm. got the long fingernails. They've got short fingernails just like me. Somehow they groom their self. They keep their nails short. There's no reports of Bigfoot with long claws like a werewolf. Rawr. No. Bigfoot got the same kind of hands I got and the same yeah. kind of feet we got because when you look at the big footprints, there's no big curled up toenail claws hanging off of them. So when I look at that picture, I see the claws coming off of it. And and or has ever report of Bigfoot or skunk ape or Sasquatch reports there, that that shouldn't be there. And that leads me to think right off the rip as an investigator, I'm looking at something to do with a bear. That's, that's my first thought on that. Sure. I mean, but let me point out that one of the marks that Jeff Meldrum said was Bigfoot getting down, digging or with using his hand looked like that. So just well, I agree. You have to be, way on that one. You you have to be a uh, skeptic on it. You have to uh, look at things okay. like a, a a bear in a mud sliding and stuff. There's this chick named Nikki and this guy named Joe. And before I met them, I wasn't so freaking skeptical. But after spending a couple of years with these guys, now I question everything and look twice. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah, you got to question. You have to question everything. And you can check Nikki out. Um, Sasquatch and, and, and you know, you you know what you see, you do record it, you do look at it, and you know, hey, if it's a bear, then it's a bear. Still good, you know, it's a good find. You're finding footprints in the ground. Not, it's not all going to be Bigfoot and stuff. It could be from bears and stuff. Now, I would hate to be in a cave with the bear. I tell you that. You know, I I'll be getting out. Now, this is the last video. This is only 36 seconds. This is Nikki's uh, watching, by the way. Sasquatch Secrets in the chat. And, and, and yes, Nikki, it's her fault. Like it's and your, that could be a bear. You see, it's your fault, Nikki. I, I come up with stuff like that now. Because, you know, two years ago, I've been like, yeah, that's a big foot track. That's absolute evidence. Yes, sir, Bob. No, it ain't like that no more. Thank you, Nikki. Hey, Thank you. I always said the, 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 the pictures you see, you think it's not. It is, and the ones you think it is, it's not. <laughs> Big at the end of the day, you don't know unless yeah, you see with your own eyes. But rest assured, if I make a video, I don't care if it's a freaking squirrel, I'm going to put Bigfoot on it. Blah. <laughs> This is the last video for the Skunk Ape. Beautiful beaches and great nightlife, but in the Everglades, the elusive and mysterious Skunk Ape is the big attraction. Have you heard of this? The Skunk Ape That's, Research Headquarters is located on to Miami Trail. To my to Miami Trail. Thank you, Elliot. It's just past the United States' smallest post office, and CBS4 photojournalist Mitch Cuba will <laughs> take you there. You can go check out his now viral story. You know, I, I, I've seen a lot of people show that video, and I'm going to be honest. Every time I look at that, it looks like a human to me, just walking with, with arms. That does not look like anything close to a Bigfoot skunk. Ape, but that's me. 
is it what, what do you know about that that shot there is that real or fake you know i've always been under the impression that that's really a creature in these videos i've seen the long cut where it runs all the way through the swamp and i've always thought it looked really realistic like something like like not a person but some kind of creature hmm. that's what that's what's so awesome that we do this show is I, I think it's more human like, and you're thinking it's a little bit more creature than human. It just tells you that we all don't look at certain things the same. Well, it's also, so, ever, you ever been down there in them Everglades in them swamps? No, I've never been to Florida. You see, where well, that thing's running through the swamp, that, that that's a that's swamp grass, it grows in the water. Wherever it's running through that swamp, is running, is running and making it through that swamp in five foot grass in three and a half, four foot of water. With snakes and gators and all that horrible stuff, and it's just trotting through there. And you know, ain't what? no people. There ain't no people gonna be out there doing that, bud. And that's a oh, good point. I've been there. I've been in swamps. See, I know see, how it goes. See, Dan, he made a good point. I'm not there. I've never been there. So, so when I'm looking at it, all I know, the ground is hard. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if it's swampy. How hard it is to walk through there because yeah. I'm not there. In my younger days, I moved down to Florida for a while, and I lived in Jacksonville, and I lived in Miami, and I lived in Key West, and I spent about six, seven months moving all around Florida, and let me tell you, Florida sucks, but it's swampy, it's mosquito infested, and if you go out and do research like I do on, on your spare time, you find yourself cropping around these swamps with these wild boars, you know? And the, and he, I tell you, the most knows. dangerous thing I ran into in Florida was the wild boars. The things when they got the little piglets with you, they will run out, gore you, and attack you on the spot. And you better have a gun with you; or you're gonna get dead real quick. And you know, the boars were more deadly than the alligators or anything else I I come in contact with in Florida. Now, Danny, you or anybody in the chat, even Sasquatch Secrets, is there any video? of somebody uh, videotaping uh, a human, you know, as an experiment, walking across it to kind of show us what it would be like if a regular person walking. I'm just curious, has anybody made a video? Actually, I think them, do it? Uh, them fellows that make the BFRO show guys, you know, finding Bigfoot. I think when they went to Florida and actually investigated this film and all this stuff we're looking at today, I think Bobo went out there and tried to recreate it and sunk up to his ass in the swamp. Yeah, I, I see. I like to see that. That's that's what I like to see. I really do remember that episode. What else? Now, there's probably only like 15 seconds left in this video. Let's see what they say. Story on CBSMiami.com. We have it posted for you right there on our homepage. And I'm new to South Florida. Clearly, that's scared? a place I need to go. Are you now scared to go to the Everglades? I don't know. I'm that might. <laughs> but it's still cool that a, a news coverage uh, got it. All right, now we're getting down to the to the uh, second last part of the show. Now, now I'm, I'm going to look at the votes right now. So right now, 29 votes are in, 59% for the Yeti, 41% for Skunk Egg. Now, we know all Bigfoots are, are an important story. We all know that. But for this show, we got to pick one. It doesn't matter. So, Danny, if you had to pick one, you don't, you don't get to pick both, what would you say – for you, considered a bigger story. And it could be for whatever reason it is for you. Is it the Yeti? Hold on. Wrong finger. Wrong finger. Is it the Yeti or is it the Skunk Ape? Which one? I would definitely go with the Skunk Ape based on the fact that there's a lot more visual evidence, a lot more verbal reports. Like because fraud is a lot more inhabited than the Himalayan mountains, you get a lot more evidence, a lot more reports, and a lot more chance to investigate. So definitely, Skunk Ape would win with me. I could drive. I, I can leave my house, and in five six hours, I can be in Florida investigating the Skunk Ape. If I leave my house and go investigate Yeti, it takes fifteen hours just to get to Japan for my next flight. And you know, almost. Almost down to the down to the wire, down to the last thing that Danny said is almost exactly why I also pick the skunk ape. I just think there's a lot more uh, 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 modern day video shots, footprints, even though they could be bears or not. There's and, and if I really truly want to investigate 
the Skunk Ape versus the Yeti, which I would rather go to Himalayans. Uh, I would love to take that trip, but reality is it's easier to go to uh, Florida to investigate the Skunk Ape. And you and I have a lot of friends who do live in Florida who has investigated the Skunk Ape and has not evidence, but a lot of stories and maybe some footprints for me to say, you know, there's just more here for me to chew on versus the Yeti. Like I said, I got all into the skunk ape back in 1984, 85. And I spent six or seven months in Florida, up and down the coast, up and down the swamps, doing the skunk ape thing. And I decided that if I was going to investigate something, I was going to investigate it somewhere where there was a lot less mosquitoes. Yeah. All right. Now, guys, people in the chat, here we go. Here we go. We're at Madison Square Garden. Everybody in the chat, you got to get ready for this. You're in the Madison. You're in the Madison. We're at the Madison Square Garden. You know, you got Daily Dan. He's the manager of the Skunk Cake to go into the ring and fight the Yeti fist on. And I'll get. I'll get, I guess I'll be the manager for the Yeti. And if you got the Skunk Ape punching the Yeti, is who will win that fight? Now the Yeti is it might. What I've heard is a little shorter. So does he got the uppercut? Or would the Skunk Ape beat up the Yeti? So people in the chat, if you think the Skunk Ape will win the fight, put one. But if you think the Yeti will win the fight, put two. So, so Danny, if these two creatures got in a ring, who do you think would win the fight? That would depend on if it's, if it's boxing or wrestling. Boxing. <laughs> Neither one of them because they can't box. <laughs> but in a, in a fight, you see, Yeti's got the canine yeah. teeth, supposedly, yeah. like a bear. Pure and fight. can bite you better. But, but Skunk Ape's got the ultimate advantage. He's got his smell. But so everybody's picking the Yeti, number two. <laughs> what Skunk Ape's going to do, Skunk Ape is going to throw Yeti down in the corner and give him the famous wrestling move called the Stink Face. And because he's a Skunk Ape, when he administers the Stink Face, it's over for Yeti. <laughs> he, he's gonna get his uh, skunk smell into his into the yetis of uh, face. <laughs> no, the stink face is where is where the big the big fat five hundred and eighty pound wrestler named Rakishi would throw you into the corner, and while you're sitting in the corner, he'd walk over, bend over, and rub his big fat giant butt in your face. And it's called a stink face, and it's like the most disgusting wrestling move ever created. But, but, Google it. But, but didn't you say the Yeti might be is a little wider, broader? So wouldn't that give the Yeti more strength to get that punch into the into the skunk ape and knock him out? <laughs> you, it's hard to hit something when you, you when the smell is so bad your eyes are watering. You can't really see. We got one person that says the Yeti will win the fight. Even a Washington Bigfoot could beat the crap out of a skunk ape. <laughs> But hey, but 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 Nikki, Nikki, this ain't we're not we're not putting the Bigfoot fight against the Skunk Ape. This is the Skunk Ape versus the Yeti. Yeah, two little Bigfoot's guys. not in this fight. So regardless if the Bigfoot could beat up both of these creatures, we're talking about just the fight between the Yeti and the Skunk Ape. <laughs> oh, but here, uh, Skunk Ape is more fit with cardio. There you go. The Skunk Ape has more cardio. So 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 maybe the trick for the Yeti is is if he's more cardio, you gotta make the skunk ape more tired. You gotta you gotta like like make it don't it don't matter. The more the skunk ape moves around and the more it sweats, the worse it smells, and it oh. becomes an even stronger odor power to overcome the big hair, the big blondie, you know. Oh, we I got mean, two for the I'm Yeti. Mad. So so Nikki is picking the Yeti, and Jojo picked the Yeti, and everybody else picked the skunk ape. So I guess in this battle. The skunk ape wins. I think skunk ape's gonna stink him up, man. And since the voting probably uh, it was almost a, a landslide, so I guess I guess the skunk ape must have knocked him out maybe the ninth round or something. But hold on. But can a skunk ape pull a tree from the ground root? You know, that's the only question Jeff Melbourne did not answer in his book. This that's the only question that, that is not answered in this book is who would win this fight. I was prepared for everything almost. <laughs> That's fun. Hey guys, I'm, I'm going to show you guys this picture. And I don't know why I, I think this picture is funny. Might not be funny to you guys at all, but 
uh, every weekend we go to um, a farmer's market. It's it's right there on the pier where the famous Mary Island incident is. And and I'm looking, and I don't know why it's funny to me. I'll just show you guys. Okay. Do you have a petting cow where you can actually go in there and pet the cow? Oh, my God. Okay. Now, of all places to put this cow, to pet the cow, <laughs> you put it next to a jerky, a, a jerky, a beef jerky shop where you can buy beef jerky that's from a cow. I mean, of all places to put the cow, you put it next to a jerky. Now, I'm no vegetarian. I eat a burger. But even I feel bad for the cow knowing that we're putting you next to that could be your mom, could be your brother. Could it's be worse your than that. It's worse than that. This year you come pet the cow. Next year you come eat the cow. Is what I mean. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm that's, that's jerky and waiting. And I don't know why I was laughing. Like I'm like like honey. Of all and everything else is vegetables and fruits there. And that's like the only meat one at this farmer's market. Why would you put a cow next to a jerky shop? <laughs> Uh, I, I I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> it was like, pre, pre, poor cow. That could be his cousin Daryl in that tent. That's that's messed up. <laughs> Isn't it messed up? <laughs> and, and 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 look, and and the 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 tent says most flavorful beef. <laughs> the most flavorful beef. I mean, I'm no vegetarian, but even I could not put a cow next to a jerky place. Put it next to a bread. There's a bread tent. So is that like a dude or a chick looking on in the orange with the gray hair? Oh, the, oh, that's a, a lady. Uh, oh, that's a guy. I started to say that lady's got boobs and a beard. Oh, you know what? Maybe that is a... God. It's it's old Pat from from Saturday Night Live, man. <laughs> what the hell? I just man, I was there. I just feel so bad for that cow. I'm like, gotta be next to a jerky. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but um, here we got a little bit of time. Um, what's it here? Where is it? Here, um, let me play this short video. Uh, I can't remember. It's a Bigfoot video. Oh, here. Oh, oh. Bigfoot caught staring at shorts. Let's see. Let's just, let's just have fun. Take a look at this. Oh, right there behind the tree, there's a shade. It's going to move. I think I was looking at that video and I I, might, I know that's completely fake because when, you could tell when somebody does a fake breathing. <gasps> I thought it was I'm Darth a, Vader. Like, yeah, yeah, Darth you could Vader's, tell. Darth Vader's Demented Child's video. You could tell that person was faking it because he was breathing like too hard. Like like he's trying to pretend like he really was scared. That's, that's a, um, let me see here. Let me see here. I got another one. Uh, yeah, Bigfoot head. ghost, a Bigfoot ghost. Hold on a second. Now that's an interesting question. Can Bigfoot have a ghost? If Bigfoot that really not, is, yeah, you know, Bigfoot spirit unleashed on the world. Can it possess you and make you run through the back of a forest naked? Now you see this thing behind a tree. They're saying that this long. If you really, you can see it, but they're saying that could be. <laughs> but that is a good question. Do you believe that Bigfoot could be a ghost? Now, if you believe that uh, a cat and a dog animals could be a ghost, then if you believe in a Bigfoot, you would mm. have to believe that Bigfoot could also be a ghost themselves. Well, we all know that all dogs go to heaven. 
Because you know that's what I was saying. <laughs> that's a good one, Danny. I always saying like 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 when I go when I went in the mountains to look for Bigfoot, I bring I bring my paranormal gear. I bring my uh, EMF detector and everything because what if the sounds you're hearing is a usual sound you're hearing that a Bigfoot makes, but what if that's a ghost Bigfoot making it? And there's a reason why you're hearing the sounds you don't see anything. Oh. Oh, look. Uh, uh, she said you can see the 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 head the uh, head camp dump. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nikki, we all know. I hate to say, it, we all know ninety percent of all videos are all made on purposely to be fake. Not not questioning. Did you catch something or an animal that people create? Oh, it don't matter. It don't matter how good the video is. Nikki's going to suck the life right out of it and point out every little flaw <laughs> it's got. And make you cry that you even thought it was real. <laughs> That's her specialty is debunking everything that you believe in. So, 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 so overall, so overall, uh, uh, Let's get to the part where <laughs> if if you're like us, if you're a believer like we are, is it safe to say, Danny, that that the Yeti and the Skunk Ape, they are they are just part of the Bigfoot. They're just the different clans of a Bigfoot. You know, not all Bigfoot's gonna look the same depending on the states they live in, and depending on the country that they live in. You don't believe because you don't believe they're separate. Creatures, you believe that they're all coming from the Bigfoot family tree? Yeah, I think there's a genetic lineage for everything, including people. It's like this is the family tree that comes down, and humans went this way, you know, and we became what we are with all our little different races. Well, Bigfoot diverged and he went down the family tree on a different limb, and then his family tree had limbs, and that's where you get the variations on these creatures all over the world. Basically the same creature, just different races of that creature. That explains why swamp apes are a little smaller. That that, that explains why my things in Boggy Creek have three toes instead of five. I think they may be a little inbred hillbilly Bigfoot going on down there around that Boggy <laughs> Creek. You know, then you get the big giants you got out there in the Northwest, seven, eight foot tall. And the Canadian Bigfoot's nine foot tall, you know. And then you get the poor little Yeti running around at 5'8", you know. You know, and, and yeah, it's co talk. colder you get. You know, Canada is colder and colder than the United States because it's closer, you know, it's closer to the to the snow country and all that. So you would, as a creature, be bigger than the average creature down here because it's colder. You know, you got to have more fur, thicker fur. I think, you know, be body. I think when you reach a certain elevation in Canada, that's where the Bigfoot sighting stop. I don't think it goes all the way to the pole, all the way to the Arctic areas. I think it stays on about the same latitude as it, it needs to eat. Same latitude as, as Alaska, you know. Yeah, it, it needs to eat up. and survive like anybody else. So it's got to stay where the majority of the food is. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, <laughs> it I no, mean, unless it's going to eat some seals, it ain't going to go too far north. Because the bigger you are, you probably need a little bit more calories than a smaller one. So you can't go somewhere where food is harder to get. Because if you do, once again, you're probably once be again, slimmer, right? that's just assuming that's just assuming that it eats like a normal. That's if it true. A true. normal animal like me or you or a gorilla, but who knows what the dietary habits of, of Sasquatch are? Maybe it don't require as much food. Maybe it's able to go six months without eating, like a like a bear that hibernates. You just don't know these things to come out there and say this, that, or the other. That's why nobody's an expert because there ain't no answers. There's only questions. No. no, no, you're right. We're assuming we're basing it off what humans would have to eat to survive, and, and we're saying the Bigfoot is like the same way. But you're right; they're not. They're they're made a little differently. They might. The biggest, pro the biggest problem with any kind of Bigfoot research is nobody has no real answers. We've only got theories and subjecture. That's what kills me. Is you can say what you think all day long, but there's no way to prove nothing. Mm -hmm. Even your videos will get debunked because somebody will come out and say, "Well, that's CGI." You know. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Well, everybody in the chat. I hope you enjoy. I hope for first of all, I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. 
And I hope you guys enjoy this kind of a fun battle. We're not here saying one's more important than the other. It's a kind of a good way to bring both cryptids, talk about them both, and have some fun with it. And like I said, it's it's different reasons on why you say one's the bigger story. We both know that the Yeti will always, if, if you put this vote to the public, the Yeti's going to win hands down because of the movies and all that. But the deeper people are into the Bigfoot community, probably the Skunk Ape will win. You know, so it's 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 just fun to talk about. But beyond that, what do you got coming up, Danny, for this great people for the chat to check out? What do you got coming up? Tonight at midnight, I do a TV, I do a a show on the Daddy Dan blog called The Witching Hour. I'm gonna actually show some of um, Bigfoot and non stuff tonight, I think, and a few other people from our Bigfoot community. I'm The Witching Hour. A lot of times, I just play. I got some really cool. Really cool Bigfoot songs that people probably never heard that I dug up. I'll probably play a few of them. Um, on Saturday nights at 12.45 on Eastern Time, you'll find me on um, 13 O'Clock Live. That's my Wolfman Dan show where I show old Bigfoot movies and stuff. I love that. The Wolfman Dan. I love that name. Oh. We, we gotta, Danny's got to make a shirt that says The Wolfman Dan. The I think that'd be awesome. And then it took me forever um, to get a hat made. And when I got the prototype of the hat and I was going to have some stuff put on it, the poor lady that made them uh, got got sick and passed away. So I haven't been able to find nobody else that does that kind of stuff around here. And then beyond that, I don't have no link up. I'll be back Thursday on a paranormal Thursday. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm deciding right now on a few stories that I want to cover for Thursday, but you guys will figure that out once I uh, once I get the link up tonight. But beyond that, I I'm happy that everybody was here. It was fun. And uh, I know it's a tough week. Usually after Labor Day, kids are going back to school. Some kids already went back to school. So I know it's a very, very busy week. So we all appreciate you guys even stopping by during these kind of weeks because we know a lot of people are doing so many things. So beyond that, we'll – You're late, Judy, Judy, Judy. Yep. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you guys all next time on the Paranormal. Happy Christmas.